Have you ever wondered when you need an accessible unit or a type A or a type B unit? Do you know what the difference is? If you have asked yourself those questions and want to know the answer, this is the video for you. So don't go anywhere, you're about to find out. Hello, my name is Josue Diaz. I am a licensed architect in the state of California. And in today's video, we will discuss the difference between accessible, type A, and type B units in residential construction. Right off the back, I want to let you know that if you are looking into this, you should at least know that these types of units are meant to provide a certain level of accessibility to residential buildings. If you read the IVC, you will find out the what, the where, and the how. That is what we call scoping. In other words, when it comes to accessible type A and type B units, the IBC will tell you what type of unit is needed, where it is needed, and how many of each type are needed. What many of you are wanting clarity on, however, is the technical aspect of these units. In other words, you may be interested in the technical requirements needed to accomplish such accessibility. What confuses some people are the technical requirements that make up the different types of accessible units. However, the scoping and technical aspects are intertwined. I will do the best I can to help you get the general idea of both, the scoping and the technical aspect of this. Let's start with scoping. IBC 1107.2 states, dwelling units in sleeping units that are required to be accessible units, type A units, and type B units shall comply with the applicable portions of Chapter 10 of ICC A117.1. Type A units are permitted to be designed and constructed as accessible units. Type B units are permitted to be designed and constructed as accessible units or as type A units. One thing that you will notice from most accessible to at least accessible is that you have accessible units type A units, and type B units. Chapter 2 of the IBC helps us get more information on each one of these units. An accessible unit is defined as a dwelling unit or sleeping unit that complies with this code and the provisions for accessible unit in ICC A117.1. We will get to the details later, but in short, 1. Unaccessible units are required to be constructed as fully accessible meaning that all required features are present at first occupancy. Two, they have no features left as adaptable. Now, let's talk about type A units. A type A unit is a dwelling unit or sleeping unit designed and constructed for accessibility in accordance with this code and the provisions for type A units in ICC A117.1. What you need to know about a type A unit is that one, some elements are constructed for accessibility. For example, you have 32 inch clear width doors with maneuvering clearances. Two, some elements that are constructed as adaptable. That means that they are not built to be compliant at first occupancy, but are provided with the infrastructure to make them accessible later on if needed. For example, providing blocking for future installation of grab bars. And three, they are designed and constructed to provide accessibility for wheelchair uses throughout the unit. Again, this might be obvious, but a type A unit is more accessible than a type B, but less accessible than an accessible unit. Let's move on to a type B unit. A type B unit is a dwelling unit or sleeping unit designed and constructed for accessibility in accordance with this code and the provisions for type B units in ICC A117.1 consistent with the design and construction requirements of the Federal Fair Housing Act. Now what you need to know about a Type B unit is that a Type B unit 1. is constructed to provide a minimum level of accessibility. 2. obviously it's less accessible than an accessible unit and also a Type A unit. And 3. it's intended to be consistent with the Fair Housing Amendments Act, the FHAA. Now, I'm not going to go over all the specifics, but I will show you this table that will show you a general overview of scoping requirements. Again, this is a broken down graphic of scoping. In other words, what unit is needed, when each type of unit is needed, and how many are needed. 
And just to remind you, all the sections here are per the IBC. In this table, there are three things that you will notice. One, accessibility, as we're talking about today, is required in an I and an R occupancies. In I occupancies, you will notice that the units are basically required to meet requirements for accessible units. Type A units are not even mentioned, and Type B units are required only if there are four or more units. In R occupancies, accessible units are required. Type A units are required when there are more than 20 units present, and Type B units are required when there are more than four units present. And four, you will see that in many instances, the number of units required is determined by the percentage of units present, but that is not always the case. Each occupancy group will let you know how many units are needed, so you will have to look at that section. And five, last but not least, you will see that there are specific sections that each unit needs to meet to be considered compliant with their respective accessibility requirements. So now that you know where to look for what type of units are needed, when they are needed, and how many are needed, let's move on to figure out the technical requirements. For this, take a look at another table. It is impossible to go over this table in detail in just a few minutes, so take a look at these specific details. First, you will notice that all the technical requirements are described not in the IBC, but in ICC A117.1. And now, let's start with comparing the units, starting with the most accessible and going to the least accessible. You will notice that an accessible unit is a type of unit that has all items meeting accessibility requirements as per the specific sections of the ICC that touches on the specific element. And as expected, at least one of each element must comply with such accessibility requirement. Two, having that in mind, when we compare an accessible unit and a type A unit, you will notice that the requirements are very similar. However, for the section of toilets and bathing facilities and kitchens and kitchenettes, you will see that there is a difference. You will find that type A units do need to meet accessibility requirements, but they are not per the specific section of accessibility like that for accessible units. Instead, they meet requirements within the same section that describes such unit, which in this case is within section 1003. For example, for kitchens and kitchenettes, a type A unit has to meet the requirements of section 1003.12 and not per section 804, which has a higher level of accessibility. And when it comes to beds, it does not even have any requirements for bed accessibility. Now, when we compare type B units, you will notice that many items are not even required to comply. Turning spaces, windows, storage facilities, and beds. You will also notice that many of the items are only required to provide the infrastructure for future installation, but not the item itself. For example, when you look at the requirements for bathroom and bathing facilities, you will notice that only reinforcement for future grab bars is required, but the actual grab bar is not required. If and when an item is required to have some level of accessibility, it is also often limited. For example, looking at kitchens and kitchenettes again, similar to a type A unit, it does not have to meet the requirements of section 804. Instead, it needs to meet the requirements of section 1004.12. In addition, you will notice that not all the portions of the kitchen or kitchenette need to be accessible either. Because of this, type B units are often referred to as adaptable units because they can be adapted to become more accessible. But that is a tricky term because depending on the state that you live in, an adaptable unit can be a completely different unit. But for now, we will leave it at that. We have accomplished a lot. We have talked about scoping and technical requirements. Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. If you believe that others will benefit from these videos, please share it with them. Send them a link. I would be much appreciated if you do so. If you would like a copy of the charts that I shared in this video, they are available for download through my Patreon account. If you are able to and you wish to support me, a link to my Patreon account will be in the description below. Again, thank you for watching. There are many other videos in my YouTube channel that talk about architecture and codes related to architecture. So don't forget to check them out too. 
But for now, this is Archie Corner, signing out.